Hello and welcome to the Beyond Earth Boot Camp. Hey guys. Hey. Hey. So it's me, Duncan, Shin, and Pyrian Flax are training to beat Lewis. And we've invited two of the devs from Firaxis to come down and teach us how to play. So we've got Will. Hi. And Dave. Good morning. What do you do at Firaxis, guys? We are the co-lead designers of Civilization Beyond Earth. Dave and I are uh, have been friends since college, and uh, we worked on this game together, sort of as as a design team. And um, we're happy to be here talking to you guys today. Fantastic! Awesome. So we've got the screen here, and we can pick where we place our first city. Oh no! Um, where should we? What should we be looking for in our placement here? Uh, well, the most important thing on the new world is a combination of resources, the cool little things on the map, and uh, avoiding, perhaps, uh, the aliens, at least at first. Right. Okay, so I've got fruit, tubers, and phyraxite, which I like the name of, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I'm gonna, is it worth, still worth putting stuff on hills? Is that still a defensive thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put mine down here, I think. There you go, and it should like fly down the ship. Yes. I've decided to set my worker to automated improvements. How, how smart is a worker? Is he going to build the right thing, or am I going to be angry with him? Well, it's the worker will build just fine, but the aliens um, are certainly not on automation. Oh. And you might want to keep a closer eye on your automated worker at the very early game when there's lots of aliens around. Okay, that's a good point. They could, he could get accidentally, you know, sort of killed. <laughs> so the aliens don't like they not they aren't super aggressive at the start are they so you've got to kind of be nice to them they're not aggressive at the start um, they're not friendly necessarily either they're they're all just living creatures they, the planet is theirs they're used to the place and right. you are strangers so they're gonna be a little curious they might uh, take a few uh, attacks of alarm or opportunity if you get too close to where they live but uh, that's not you shouldn't equate that to them necessarily being your enemies. Okay, so you don't want to get too near the nest at the beginning. Yes, absolutely. I was I was playing earlier, Duncan, and the thing that happened was when I had one unit near their nest, they were kind of cool with that. Yeah. And then I moved another unit near, and they were like, "It's go time," and they <laughs> jumped on my explorer and killed it. But then they were cool. They're like they just there's a, there are sort of levels you've got to find. I, it was uh, it was eventually I, we sort of I figured out roughly what would anger them and what wouldn't and you can make it work it's quite cool right so what, what's good to start off building in your in your city like turn one a clinic's not a bad option if you want to emphasize growth and health okay um if if you're the uh, the african civ that that's a pretty good combination oh yeah pop that then and so the research tree is not a tree it's a massive web and this is what we get most confused about actually is we don't really we're not really sure what we should be aiming for or um, anything like that. Like, so, what's a good one to start off with? Like, do you do you go down like a big side, or do you go like all all out on all the little ones, or how do you how do you? I mean, it's really an exploratory process. Yeah. And, and you can kind of take it. You need to you need to reevaluate your technology trajectory uh, periodically. Um, and I think uh, the the typical game kind of has a teardrop shape on in the, right. in the tech web by the end you kind of research those central texts to unlock all of the core uh, military unit classes okay. um, picking up things sort of as you need them to accommodate your uh, your starting situation and and what's happening on the ground and then as you start to specialize uh, you sort of shoot for um, the later in text but I, I would not recommend picking one at the very out you know very outside of the web and yeah. sort of shooting straight for it you'll you'll miss a lot if you okay. do that so you want to go kind of get all the all the middle ones first. Take a balanced approach initially, at least. So what's the best tech to kind of start off with, maybe? Well, it really depends. If you have a lot of um, aliens or miasma, that, that green, toxic-looking stuff around yep. your uh, city, ecology is a good choice. There are uh, a couple of things you'll need um, to to let your workers clear miasma or to build uh, fences to keep the aliens away. Okay. Um, if you're going for uh, more military emphasis, perhaps computing is a, is a good place to shoot for. Right. So, but and pioneering obviously is a good one to start off as well because you want to get trade and that's right and uh, new cities. Are, okay. It's also worth noting that the in that screen there is a uh, a filter and a search bar. So if you just want to find texts oh, yeah. that provide you with uh, improvements, for example, you want to improve your city, you can filter by that. Or if you just ah. want to find uh, harmony themed affinity technologies, you can find that as well. I see. Okay. So you've got these three affinities at the top. And they, so you kind of, do you, do you, do you kind of specialize in them, or do you kind of go for all of them? Or? 
Um, you're going to invariably be some combination of right. the three when you reach the end of the game, but you'll have one that's dominant. Uh, and the affinity, your progress in the affinity, which you make by researching technologies that give you affinity points, uh, is what um, drives your military uh, progression. So if you want better military units beyond the base units you unlock from Tech Tree, uh, you need to invest in technologies that provide you with affinity to do so. Okay, yes. So you can upgrade your units based on your affinity level. Mm. Yes. So I've got some, some things called chits in here, and they're like little bugs that are fighting each other. And I, I want to say that they're like horses from Civ. Are they like a cavalry thing? <laughs> they're not. Uh, no, you don't, you don't need to. Uh, <laughs> you ride them. You might want to ride them. Um, I like the idea of riding giant alien beetles into battle. Now, that, that there cool. is a unit that is exactly that, but oh. you don't need chitin to, uh, to build it. Okay. <laughs> is that, is, it's, it's chitin, not chitin. Okay, okay. Okay, let's send this turn. Also, don't forget, Shin, that sometimes if you search one of the pods, as I had the other day, you can get an alien that joins you and becomes like your pal. Ah. Nice. Not from the pods, but from the, from uh, the, sites, ex the right? expedition site. That's right, yeah. yeah. And so, that's cool. He was like a flying drone, and he could he could fly. So he was flying over the sea. He was he was the best explorer ever. Oh, There's actually smokes. a very, very small chance that you can get a siege worm doing that. A oh, siege wow. worm. A siege worm. Game over. <laughs> If I get one of those, it's coming straight for your turn. <laughs> but you won't be able to find mine because I've called it Alien Hive. So oh, you'll right. never well find done. it amidst the other alien hives. Right. That is clever. Yeah. I, so can, I, I can see the other I can see you guys on the minimap. There's Freeland. That's me. And Alien Hive. Is that me though, oh, yeah. or is it an alien hive? Ah, it's I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> so you're south of me, Shin. I'm gonna I'm gonna start heading there to, to meet you. We can do some trading. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, let's do some trading. Yeah, <laughs> trading bullets. <laughs> so that's one of the interesting conceits in this game. Obviously, in the future, we have radio, right? So you, you get to see and interact with uh, the civs on the map immediately after they arrive. Right. Um, and so you, you know where everybody is. Uh, you don't know the other cities they build, but you, you know where their capital is. Okay. Shin, you're getting more, more energy than me. What's going on there? Oh, I'm, uh, you know, just, I, I guess I, I, it's, it's these chitin, they're, they're rich sons of guns that give me all the gold. <laughs> no, I guess I've just got more tiles. I've got, I've got a worker as well. He's building a farm. Ah. Good job. Good so job, worker. We played the other day and Shin instantly found this, um, Here we go. <laughs> what was it, a solar collector? Yeah. In a, in a, in a crash satellite? They're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It just gave ridiculous amounts of energy all, like, from the start. Oh, man. That's a great unit. If you don't find one in, uh... In a resource in a re, uh, resource pod, you can you can develop one pretty quickly by researching the appropriate text. Right, it's pretty close to the center. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so uh, there's different ways of dealing with miasma, isn't there? So if you go down harmony, you end up you can walk through it and even heal from it. Right, and you can uh, early in the game. There are certain texts that provide you means of getting rid of it, but late in the game, interestingly, you can start to add it back. Oh, right. Oh. So you can, you can build this satellite called the Miasmic Condenser, which just dumps it. <laughs> so if you, if you put that you know, over someone's uh, city, it can oh. be... Oh, okay, so bad. if they'd gone down and lift a different tree so right. than Harmony, you could just start miasmering them. That's the point, because this, this game starts well beyond nukes, so, so nukes aren't really a thing. Is, is there anything in the game that, that acts similarly to nukes from Civ Five? There are nuclear weapons in the game, but they take the form of uh, a dirty bomb. So, uh. Uh, and you can, that's one of the highest level um, covert, oper uh, covert operations you can do. So if you plant a spy in a city, you can detonate a dirty bomb there, and it halves the city's population, which wow. is pretty devastating. That's awesome. It's not the only ultimate covert op you can you can pull. So there's no nukes in the sense of a ballistic missile that you can sort of safely fire from your own town. You have to set up a covert ops right. network. But um, the dirty bomb is the, the highest level for, for purity, I believe. Mm -hmm. And the supremacy and harmony players both have their own version of that that's devastating in a different way. Oh, okay. There's, uh, the, I think the, the supremacy one is sabotage, which... Uh, knocks out all of the improvements within, I think, a five-tile radius of wow. your city. Um, then there's the worm caller, which is, I think, my favorite. That's like basically the thumper from Dune that you activate in the city. These oh. worms like spring up right next to it. And oh my god! <laughs> oh no! It's pretty bad. <laughs> oh, awesome! I found a solar collector. Oh, oh lucky you! GG. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! So, Pirin, you played a game where you... Um, I don't want to talk on, about on, it. On, on, on turn 40, a worm killed his capital. Yeah, uh, uh, this, was, this was prior to understanding how 
to sort of pacify the uh, the aliens. And I've just uh, like if you move too close, they do they they get, they almost give you a little warning. They sort of shuffle towards you. If you move away or move one of the units away, they can sort of end up being cool with you. But I just just like right, these bugs are going down. So I was like build constantly building military units, <laughs> rushing at the uh, the bugs, and then eventually they called up their mate CG. And uh, CG the worm wasn't busy that afternoon, so he just came along and wrecked me. It was like <laughs> three turns. It was brutal. Nice. Oh dear. Yeah, we took kind of a page out of XCOM uh, for this for the early part of this game. It, we just decided it would be okay if it was a little bit more brutal than Civ Five. Yeah. That's just a the, you know it's a hostile world. Um, that's part of the story we're trying to tell, and uh, sometimes you lose. <laughs> yeah. Civ Five could be brutal though. Well, I surely did. Yeah, but the barbarians didn't didn't smash your cities with their giant moors. No, <laughs> no that's true. <laughs> they did take your your scientists and your settlers and your workers though. <laughs> that is true. In one of the early builds of this, we still we still had that code in there, so the aliens could capture your, your oh, civilian no units. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that kind of works though. Maybe like infect them with something that Probe makes them. them. Yeah, like become. <laughs> <laughs> Aliens. Oh yeah, and they, they give them back to you, and then like chest bursts. Maybe out. some modder out there will. Yeah. <laughs> make that happen for us. Oh god, the xenomorph mod where everything's like aliens, and mm -hmm. that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. It's coming, I'm sure. Yeah. So this this little alien here, alien drone, just kind of skimming around my city, kind of. A, don't don't shoot him. No, shoot him. Oh, I shoot him. Yeah, if shoot I shoot him, him he's gonna he's gonna get annoyed, isn't he? Nah, I'm sure it'd be fine. The more the more <laughs> aggressive you are, the more aggressive they get. I mean, you would. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That makes sense. And actually, if you do shoot that alien with your city, he'll remember the tile that he was shot in and avoid it for a period of time. Oh, really? really? Yeah. That's cool. And it, it, he's pretty far away from a nest, so you could probably, you know, take a couple shots at him and it yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't really matter that much. Is it is it worth getting a bunch of explorers early on to, to get these, like, dig sites? They seem quite important. The dig sites yeah. can give you a distinct advantage mm. if you can uh, if you can get to them. I would I like to pair up an explorer with uh, a marine close by. Right. Um, two explorers, you know, in the very beginning of the game, maybe a little much, but uh, I don't know. It's your, your choice to make, I guess. If you don't okay. if you don't perceive the threat, then sure. I think these aliens have been kind of nice to me. There's yeah. a, a crest satellite I want to check out. I'm getting plus 12 gold a turn, or energy. Wow, because mm -hmm. you're so the collector, isn't it? And because I went down this, uh, my starting things gave, I, I had a clinic very at the mm. very start, and I also had a, um, how can I see what, what things I've got? Uh, city buildings and wonders. So mm -hmm. I have a clinic, an old earth relic, my headquarters, and because of the stuff I chose, um, I think I, I have a, I just, I'm all about, you know, my city owns, basically. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay. Captain Braggy Pants. Yep. <laughs> Vape Town is the place to be. Vape Town. Vape Town. <laughs> hey, I got a soda collector as well now. Wow, I yeah. don't have one of those, you jerks. <laughs> so this, this is a satellite which you can launch into the orbital layer. Okay, so It'll it, cover basically the, I think, the seven squares, yeah. or more or less. I don't think it affects your city, because my city still only produces one... It gives your city 20% extra. It does, but my city tile produces only one oh, right, yeah. or two energy now. Oh, it says orbital unit plus one energy on tiles you own, mm. so I guess it is working. It's pretty sweet. We, we're rolling in it. i got 200 gold, baby. What are, what are some of the late game satellites you can get? Because I can imagine there'd be some funky things happening. I think my favorite is the planet carver. It's just right. a <laughs> giant, <laughs> giant orbital laser that just oh, looks, man. looks awesome. That, that sounds is, amazing. Yeah, w Late in the game, when your orbital coverage extends... Um, much farther beyond your city, uh, you can use orbital units offensively. So you mm -hmm. can't really do that in the beginning because your coverage doesn't extend that far. Um, but once it does, you can you can really start to do some pretty devious things with satellites. All right. So you you want to increase your coverage? I wonder what that meant. Increasing coverage. Yeah, it's how far away from their cities you can launch and support satellites. And right. so the um, the way that you place orbital units, they, their territory of influence can't overlap. So. The broader range that a satellite can can affect, the sort of more difficult perhaps it is to place it, or the more oh, okay. of your territory you have to consume with it. So if you have lots of satellites in, in orbit, um, you have this kind of game to play of where do I find space for these? And ah. finding space for that, for instance, planet cover um, could be tricky if the skies are crowded. And that's where things like um, your siege units able to strike them down become very important. Oh, can you shoot satellites out of the sky? Oh. Yes, definitely. They're very, very weak, and they're also not permanent. If you leave them alone, they'll eventually fall out of the sky. Yeah. 
uh, and you can put another one up there. And interestingly, they have a chance of crashing somewhere where you can dig them up to get a little bit extra with your uh, with your explorer, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah, I just saw one crash a minute ago, so yeah, I'm gonna yeah. go and check it out now. <laughs> oh no! You're doomed! No! He just, might leave you alone. Yeah, just. You haven't been attacking him, have you? No, I haven't touched him. Yeah, you should be fine. Now, if, some, <laughs> okay, if cool. someone else riles the aliens up. Alright, oh. I'm gonna start shooting the aliens. Don't you, don't, you, don't you dare! 